been a factor in the downfall of many foreign governments. Most people, however, are shocked to discover how big a player the CIA has been in the politics of allied nations. In late 1975, a security crisis existed in Australia. The Prime Minister, Gough Whitlam, hinted he would no longer allow the CIA to operate the top secret communications base known as Pine Gap. By 1 p.m. on November the 11th, 1975, the government was out of power and, some would argue, the CIA was back in control. God save the Queen. Because nothing will save the Governor General. It's taken 18 months to assemble Pine Gap from prefabricated buildings. Now, no aeroplane can fly closer than two and a half miles to the base. The secrecy is total. Since we agreed in December 1966 the Americans could build it, Pine Gap near Alice Springs has been the center of speculation on the CIA's activities here. Officially, it's an experimental space station. Pine Gap was to be a joint facility run by the Defense Departments of Australia and the United States. Stallings and another senior CIA man, Victor Marchetti, drafted the Pine Gap Treaty laying out the ground rules for cooperation between the two governments. Officially, this executive agreement between the Australian and U.S. governments stated that all surveillance information gathered at Pine Gap would be shared equally. There's no doubt whatsoever about it. Pine Gap was set up by the CIA for espionage, and that remains what it's about. Liberal Party leader Robert Menzies led the longest-serving government in Australia's history. The world needs the United States of America. The world needs the United States of America. The world needs the United States of America. Strong links between Australia and the US had been formed, allowing for a proliferation of top secret bases. All that was about to change. The first Labor Prime Minister of Australia for 23 years, John Whitman. Would you trust your international affairs again to the men who gave you Vietnam? It's a choice between the past and the future. It's time for a new government. When the Whitlam government was elected in 1972, there was considerable concern in Washington. Uh, both raised the question of the impact of military installations uh, in Australia, with particular reference to the secrecy uh, surrounding them. Uh, could you indicate uh, the policy your government will take on these questions? There now need be no secrecy, because uh, Mr. Barnard and I can find out whatever we want to. Christopher John Boyce is serving 42 years in a state penitentiary for counter-espionage. At the age of 24, he was caught selling secrets gathered at Pine Gap to the Russians while working as a cipher clerk at TRW Communications, an alleged front for the CIA. They were going to cut the Australians out of the existing information that was coming down. But in any case, it was a uh, screw the Aussies type project didn't take very long for the Whitlam government to get itself offside with the Nixon administration. I have concluded that the time has come for action. I objected to the American bombing of Hanoi, undefended open bombing of Hanoi. I complained about that. The American ambassador at the time was sent to tell Whitlam that they objected very strongly to that. Come into power, molding in, barging in. We were deeply concerned. They were frightened of the small degree of independence being displayed by the Labour government. The Labour government was regarded as a security risk by the United States, and the United States, at an official level, would have done everything they could to have it removed. You don't see the jewels of counterintelligence being placed in jeopardy by a party that was seeking a new way for Australia. Early in 1973, Whitlam demanded from ASIS, the Australian Secret Intelligence Service, the names of operatives and, and where they were actually carrying out their operations. And he was told that there were operatives in 
Chile, working under the CIA, involved in the destabilization of the Allende government, and he immediately informed them to cease that particular operation. They didn't, and at least two of our operatives were there in September 73 when the bloody coup took place at Toppled. Salvador Allende. Enter Marshall Green, the new American ambassador to Canberra, a senior career diplomat heavily involved in at least three coups, most notably the one in Indonesia. Marshall Green actually stated that if the Australian government dared to in any way take the power away